<laughs> All right, guys, Good old Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting out here at the range, and I've got something new I want to show to you. Uh, a lot of guys have done a lot of reviews on these things. Believe it or not, man, I watched a lot of the reviews just so I could get a better feel on how to present to you something a little bit different than has been presented to you in the past. This is the CMMG Banshee. This is a 200 series. Well, let's start off by saying they have a 100, 200, a 300. I guess the 300 series is really cool, but because I wanted an 8-inch barrel, I had to settle for the uh, 200. And I'm not unhappy about it because I really like this thing. I have yet to fire it. But before we do that, I just wanted to go over some of the details uh, uh, of the differences between what you get in something that, well, let's just face it, guys, this is not a... Uh, this is not one of the cheaper versions of some, of an AR pistol that you can buy in a pistol caliber carbine or uh, in a carbine that has a pistol caliber round. Okay, well, anyway, this guy's chambered in 45 ACP. There's a wealth of other ones, uh, anywhere from 22 to 10 millimeter. When the 10 millimeter came out, everybody and their mother did a review on it, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do a 45. Besides, I've got a lot of 45 ACP, and it just made sense to me because I've got some 45 laying around, especially thanks to the guys over there at Big Daddy Unlimited. Well, anyway, this thing right here is the cast me out. The quality of construction, put it together, how the upper and the lower matches it is truly impeccable. So let's talk about some of the things that make this different from the other AR pistol carbines or you know the short barrel rifles or AR pistols. First of all, this one's chambered in 45 ACP. I've never had one in 45 ACP. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm really looking forward to shooting it. I got a couple long sticks over there and we're gonna give it a hell of a run here in a few minutes. So this thing has an eight inch barrel, so one to 16 twist. It's got a medium taper build to it. There is no gas block. There is no direct impingement. This thing is a direct blowback. And as a matter of fact, we'll talk about that here really quickly in a few minutes. Buzzle brakes, the CMMG SV brake, and it's threaded to five, seven eighths by 28, I guess. And then the gas port, well, there is none. The receiver is a Ford 775 T6 aluminum. It's got an M4 style upper feed ramps inside it right there, I think. Yep, no, it's got a single feed ramp because it's 45 ACP and it's got a forged lower T6 aluminum. I preferred, and I like, they asked me what color I wanted and they wanted the burnt bronze and that's what I got. So front to back, well, front to back. Here's the front. They've got a M-Lock series handguard up here. They do produce this handguard. We have uh, just a regular old mil spec dust cover. The one thing I do like about it is that you've got this big old fat uh, mag release. Hold on one second and we'll get a mag. Now the rifle does come with a couple magazines itself. I think one, it's a 10 round mag or whatever they got or 15 round mag. I just happened to see these guys on sale. These are SGM tactical. We'll see how these run, but you can see this thing just fits right up in there. But that mag release, is absolutely perfect. Uh, it is a big paddle. And since, as of late, people went from the polymer mag releases to the solid aluminum, you do have just a regular old mag, re mag release, I mean, a bolt release right there, which is why there is a Ford Assist. Uh, on this particular one, the 200 series, you do have a mil spec charging handle. Uh, it is backed up with the uh, rip brace, which you guys remember, I did a video on it a little while back. Uh, it does come with the QD attachment points here. I did bring a sling, but there are no QD attachment points on the handguard right here. You go ahead and pull that thing out and you're ready to go. So let's talk about the interior and that's where the biggest difference is. This does have a mil spec trigger system, which is not that bad, but the biggest thing that we have in this is the radial delay blowback. And that's this right here. Let's go ahead and bring the camera up real close so you can see what we're talking about. Okay, so the differences between this guy and a regular blowback bolt is this. It has a bolt in it. It also has an ejection pin as well as an extractor on it, the same as an M16 or an AR-15 bolt carrier group. The biggest difference is this is spring loaded right here. It's a delayed radial blowback. So what happens is, is when it fires, it fires, it starts pushing back, it brings the bolt, it disengages, and it comes back to the rear. What does this do? It slows the operation down, making it more reliable. Now let me show you the difference here between, say, something this like this guy right here, the PSA AR9. This is just a regular blowback. On this guy right here, as you'll notice, try to get this, I'm recording this in 4K. There is an extractor and there, there is no bolt. So what happens, or there is no ejector pin. So what happens is this thing blows back, it pulls the extractor and ejects 
the round. Also, you'll notice that this is just a dead end bolt right here. This specific one, the uh, well, what the would be the gas key is so solid right there. Now, the thing is also the difference between this and an AR bolt is the fact that this firing pin is spring loaded. It's not free free floating inside of it. So, one of the things I found the hard way I did find out is that. You shoot with a trigger system like a hyperfire, uh, there is the potential, and this is with any AR9 or AR45 or whatever you're shooting with, is that that particular trigger system is faster than the bolt and you may have a round go off out of battery. It's actually happened on one of my PSAs when we were bump firing the thing. So be careful when you're doing that. But because the spring, this firing pin is spring loaded, that's one of the things that I do like about it. So. Um, as this guy right here is spring loaded as well, but it's, it's in there really tight. Now, one of the cool things about it is if you're ever planning on running this guy suppressed, you do have an adapter kit that you can put in here. You can add some additional weights back here to go ahead and provide for additional mass in the bolt. The buffer and the buffer spring. Now, believe it or not, I'm not taking this thing apart at all, but this is just a standard uh, H. Standard buffer, no big surprise there. Uh, but in a lot of my other uh, AR9s, and I can't remember if this guy has in it in or, or not, did I put the big one in? I'm not sure if I did or not. Yeah, this has got a like a six ounce buffer. This bad boy is bad. So one of the things we are gonna do in an upcoming video is I'm gonna do a demonstration. Uh, we're gonna show you the H1, H2, H3 buffer and the standard buffer, and we're gonna weigh them out and then we're gonna shoot them in the same rifle because I wanna show you the direction or what the effects are when you change up buffers on that thing. All right, so we put this guy back together again, but the really cool thing is just that uh, the radial delayed blowback, the positive aspects, uh, it, it is supposed to be more reliable. Now I know uh, Ka Carl, Carl, my friend over there, tactical rifleman, he and I met over there at the SHOT Show. Um, he was telling me he's put like 6,000 rounds through it. Now you can see right here, one of the things is, is that the buffer tube is always out. And that's where that de delayed radial blowback because the bolt, what happens is, and I was actually going to um, show you what that thing looked like from the inside, but what happens is when as that bolt goes all the way forward, those locking lugs turn just a tad and it locks that thing in. So when a thing fires, it fires back, spring-loaded, it comes back, and then it goes all the way to the rear. When you put this thing back together, well, you pre-tension it like this, and you put her back. Now, all the way, this thing weighs uh, five pounds, two ounces, with an empty magazine. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this thing will do. With the mil-spec trigger, I don't know how fast we're gonna be running. I may have should have brought a really cool trigger out here, but uh, we'll see how it runs. We got some targets set up. Let's go ahead and shoot her up. Here we go. All right, so while we're shooting, we're gonna be putting this little guy right here. It's a new little prototype from the guys over there at Primary Arms. And uh, eventually this is gonna have to go on a really neat carbine so we can test out the ACSS reticle in it. But it's a uh, two and a half millimeter. This thing's bad to the bone. All right, so we're sitting out here, we've got this uh, SGM mag, this thing's holding like 26 rounds, something of that nature. And I don't have any experience with these guys right here, but I will tell you this, I just zeroed this bad boy in at 50 yards. And uh, I'm looking forward to testing out this guy right here. This is their silver line, 20.25 or whatever it's called. Anyway, it's got the ACSS reticle, probably not meant the best thing for here. 230 grain, uh, Uh, this guy, last round hold open. In my way, in, in, in my world, that is in the PCC or the uh, AR-15 pistol, in the pistol caliber carbine, that in itself is awesome. Let's go ahead and try that again. Got a couple hundred rounds. Let's so gonna blast through this thing. There we go. <laughs> And that's not a light trigger on this guy. She's probably pulling at about four, three and a half to four and a half pounds. But I will tell you this, I'm loving life. Let's go ahead and load up some more mags. I wish I had a ton of these guys.
one. All right, so we back this bad boy up to the 25 yard line and this in. Again, those are 10 inch targets out there. So another one of the things I wanted to point out, I'm not sure if it's uh, specific to the nine millimeter, but they do have a magazine adapter where you can put it into a regular P mag and you can load that bad boy up with nine millimeter and use your nine millimeter upper. How about that? So. <laughs> Get down. All right, so yeah, along with the 11, uh, what do you call it, last round hold open, recoil on this bad boy is non-existent. Uh, the muzzle brake does a great job on it. Uh, and you know what? They do have this thing in like a 5-inch barrel or something like that with a 4-inch handguard. But with this 8-inch barrel, this thing is bad to the bone. Nice thing is you got this big old mag release right here. Come on. <laughs> Pull that thing out. Last round hold open. I want to show you guys the recoil impulse. Here we go. I'm loving this thing. Let's put some more ammo in it. All right, guys. So one of the things I always encourage people to do is look at the ejection pattern. This is going to be no different. So uh, <laughs> I'm out so far. Loving this. Let's go ahead and take a look at it here. Here we go. Stand by. Running out exactly at the three. Three o'clock position. Not bad. All right. One of the cool things is, is I just finished up mounting that, uh, red dot here this is the acss reticle with the horseshoe but i used this guy right here and we'll be bringing a uh video here in the near future this is the borka toolkit this is the rh model and the cool thing is is if you need anything uh especially for mounting scopes optics things of that nature uh this guy right here is the cat's meow so one of the things i wanted to do before we end the video and I give you my final yeehaw on it is I wanted to take it back where at uh, 50 yards you guys might be able to see these steels up there let's see if I can do this without killing my bag Those poor primo targets have seen better days. <laughs> ah, that's it. All right, so my overall assessment of this thing, recoil. Mitigation, absolutely incredible. Very soft shooter, 45 ACP, which is one of the reasons why I selected 45 ACP. As a matter of fact, it's probably my favorite round for home protection. I keep a FNX 45 with a laser light combo uh, at my side table. Just because uh, 45 ACP, it's a slow round, it's a big fat round, over penetration, I don't have to worry about it leaving the house, that kind of thing. But uh, meat, it loves meat. So, uh, moving front to back, I uh, these guys right here, one of the things, if only my biggest criticism is this guy right here. I'm not big on the loop. I like the QD attachment. It's Why would you put a QD attachment here if you're going to have a hook attachment here? I would uh, say that the handguard should come with some type of QD attachment. If you're going to run it, if you're going to come with one here, let's put one here. That way you can run a two-point sling. Uh, or even a base plate mod uh, QD point right here so that you can mount her high. Uh, trigger on this guy, this is the 200 series. It's not the 300. I think the 300 just comes with a mil spec, but I would suggest me, I probably, because I do shoot a lot of competition, but because this would be a, a defensive firearm for my home protection, I'd keep this trigger in here. It's plenty sharp. It's plenty accurate. I don't have to worry about it.
again, recoil impulse, non-existent. The trigger's fine. Uh, power, it's there. It's accurate. You can hit targets after 50 yards without any issues. Pick rail all the way across the top. The alignment for the upper receiver and the handguard is impeccable. Color, anodizing is perfect. You do have an integrated, uh, what do you call that thing? A trigger guard right here that I failed to mention. It comes with the MOE uh, grip, which is a fine grip. Don't have any issues there. But overall, man, what a great firearm. Uh, I'm looking forward to testing it. I'm going to run it out to the long range. We're going to continue doing some SMC rounds uh, from double tap or SMO, uh, whatever those things are that run about 1,300 feet per second. You are safe in running it in this thing. I am supposed to be getting some of that ammo here very soon, and uh, we'll see how it performs in that. We're going to break out some hams, some watermelons, and we're going to do some uh, fun with some explosive stuff. But anyway, would I recommend it? I'll tell you what, that's one of those calls that you're going to have to make at a price point anywhere from twelve to $1,500, depending on what anodizing, what features you want to have on it. It's not cheap, but what it is, is it's powerful, and it's got that going for it. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, and I do like the fact that the 45 is the exact round that I shoot at home when somebody breaks in the house. But anyway, guys, that's it. If you like the video, how about give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll put the uh, link in my website, kb32tac.com, uh, to this exact firearm right here. And you guys can read up on the specifications. Uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, we always end it like this. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom's not free. Those guys working for our, our Constitution and our Bill of Rights. I salute you. Let's go, Boy 32. I am out.